In this part two video, I'm planning to go ahead and start off by connecting the Ubiquiti router directly to the computer so that I could upgrade the firmware inside and do an initial setup. All right, so before plugging the router in, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, download the firmware for it. I'm gonna go ahead and go to Ubiquiti's website. Go to downloads. All right, let's see, um, Edge Max. All right, so it looks like the latest version is this one here for my router, which is the ERPOE. All right, so something unfortunate just happened. I recorded quite a bit of video and actually I didn't realize that I hadn't hit the record button. So I'm gonna actually retrace my steps to show you guys what I have done so far. So I found out that I'm gonna need to set up a static IP address to connect to the router. It does not automatically assign me an IP address. So the first thing you're gonna need to do is type if stat or something similar. The reason why you're typing this is so you can get the name of your interface card. And uh, my uh, interface that I'm using is ENP OS 31 F6. And I'm gonna go ahead and copy that. So I have it in my clipboard. And I'm gonna go ahead and now type DH, well, I'm gonna type ETC, D, uh, well, whatever you guys use for editing, I'm gonna use Nano. TC DHCPCD.conf. So this is the file you're going to need to edit if you're going to edit DHCPCD to give a static IP address to the network interface. So inner. So in the previous recording, which didn't work out, I already had done this, and what I've done is I added this text here to the end of this file. So basically, for interface ENPOS 31F6. I've given it a static IP address of 192.168.1.100. Uh, set the router to point to 192.168.1.1. And the domain name servers, I've set up two of them. The first one is pointing back to the router. The other one is 8.8.8. .8 Once you've uh, added this text to this configuration file, go ahead and uh, save it and exit. The next thing you want to do is kill any DHCP CD uh, daemon that is running currently. So to do that, you just type pkill DHCP CD, hit enter, and that should kill all DHCP CD uh, processes that are currently running. And to start it back up, you just type DHCP CD and the name of your card, and I actually have it copied, so paste. So this is what I'm going to type in for my interface, uh, network interface, and press enter. And you can see that it sets up the static address to point here. Now in the video I was trying to record, what I had done is I had connected to the router and I went ahead and updated the firmware using this file here. And uh, it went well. Basically, it uploaded that file into the router, and the router digested it, and it rebooted. And this is where I'm at now. After the router rebooted, I'm, I've am i lost connection to it. So, initially I had connected to it using HTTPS 192.168.1.1. By the way, if you guys see a certificate error, add the exception and allow yourself to uh, connect to it. So that's what I had to do. So I'm gonna give this another try. Okay, looks like it's back up. Looks like it needed a little bit of time after rebooting to start itself up. And uh, so this is the address I used. Again, I added a certificate exception to get to this point. So if your browser complains, go ahead and add that 
certificate exception. So to log in, the default username is actually in the manual that it came with, and it's uh, UBNT. And the default password is the same thing, UBNT. So I'm going to go ahead and log in. Before I updated the firmware, this screen was slightly different. It looked a little bit different. And I had much, le much less options in the submenu here on the top. And it, yeah, so right now, as you can see here, it's the latest version that I downloaded. And so the way I updated it is it was kind of tricky at first. You have to point your mouse all the way down here where it's a system, click on it, this thing slides up, scroll down, right here it says upgrade system image. Basically click, click upload a file and feed it the file that you downloaded, the firmware, the latest version. And it'll just uh, show you a progress bar and then once it gets to 100 it reboots itself and you get to this point I am at now. So that's it. Uh, Firmware is updated. That part's working. The next step is to click wizard. So please choose the wizard on the left. So there's basic setup. Okay, so it says use this wizard to set up basic internet connectivity and to customize local network settings. So the internet port I'm gonna, well the port I'm gonna connect to the modem with is the eat o so this is actually good next it says internet connection type i'm going to leave it at dhcp because i get the ip address automatically from the modem next it says firewall i'm going to leave that check dhcp version 6d i don't really care about any of these other things and i'm not going to be using vlan currently so i'm okay with that too next it says bridge liner face into single network Secondary LAN port, LAN ports 2, 3, and 4, user setup, I see. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click bridge LAN interfaces into a single network. So that's going to turn Ethernet 1, 2, 3, and port 4. It's going to treat it like a switch, basically, and all of it is just going to be on the same network. Next, set up user. So I'm going to go ahead and set up myself a username and password. And once I'm done with that, I'm going to go ahead and click apply. All right, guys. So I have went ahead and moved the router over to this room here. Um, this is where it's going to remain. This is the router here. And while I was actually moving it, I realized one thing. This thing gets pretty hot. Um, to the touch, it's very hot. So you do not want to have this in an enclosed area. So that's the router. And here's the modem. Currently it's not connected to anything other than the coax cable and I've got myself a ethernet cable here. This is a gigabit, gigabit ethernet cable. I'm going to go ahead and use this to connect the modem to the router. So you just have to make sure this is a gigabit cable because you know it, it makes a big difference. Um, make sure it's a nice good cable and that it actually works well. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, connect it now. Alright, so as you can see, I've went ahead and connected it to EAT0 because that's, uh, that's the port that you need to connect to the modem. So that should be uh, good to go. So I'm assuming at this point uh, this has received the IP address from the modem. And to test this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect my laptop to EAT1 and see if it's working. Alright, so that's my laptop there, and it's got a Ethernet port right there through an adapter, all installed and ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and connect a different Ethernet cable to ETH1, and this is going to go to my laptop. Alright, 
right, let's confirm that we got internet. So I'm gonna go to google.com. Yep, looks like we got internet. Yes, it does work. So actually what I wanna do now is the, a speed test real quick. All right, so uh, recap on what has been done so far. This has been uh, part two, and what I have finished doing is connecting the router to the modem, configuring it. The modem was installed yesterday by the new internet service provider, and today I got it connected. I've also got it connected to this access point here. So uh, let's see what's left. Uh, the next thing uh, that we're doing is we've made an appointment for the iBox people to come and install the iBoxes on the TVs and they're going to do whatever wiring is needed to uh, connect it through Ethernet to this router. So here's that access point I mentioned. It's just a cheapo TP-Link access point. And it's also a wireless range extender. It's actually what I bought it for initially. But luckily it's also can be also used as an access point. And since the Ubiquiti router is not wireless, this is definitely going to come in handy. Let's see. So it has a LAN port right there. Uh, this is what I'm going to be using to connect it to the router. And uh, that's pretty much all there is to it. So I'm going to go ahead and set this up real quick. I'm going to go ahead and connect the access point to Ethernet point, port 2, right here. This is the router again, and I'm going to go ahead and go through it one more time just to show you guys uh, where we're at. Basically, uh, first three ports on the router are now connected to something. The first one is connected to the modem. The second port is connected to this desktop temporarily just so I could get access to this page and uh, the third port E2 is connected to the access point the Wi-Fi access point this is the dashboard page and it's kinda of showing all this traffic coming in and out the green color bars are the switch and that's the Wi-Fi access point um, anything that's a switch or an access point will be uh, categorized under this this one right here switch zero and uh, yeah, so you could see down here that the status of all the ports and you could see that E3 and E4 are disconnected and the other ones are connected. It's pretty cool. You could actually assign like for example, let's say for the wireless access point, I want to configure it. You could uh, just directly configure it here. You could give it a different description. Um, you could set up a static IP or you could have it use DHCP so for it by default it just uses DHCP for devices and uh, yeah so and then of course you could also mess with the power over Ethernet here and so forth um, I also went ahead and uh, enabled traffic analysis this is normally disabled up here in the right corner I went ahead and clicked enabled what's cool about the traffic analysis is it's pretty detailed so it looks through all the different packets passing through the router and it's able to identify uh, what host is sending it or receiving and it even knows what type of uh, traffic it's, it's, that's going through the router so it knows that this one here for example Android this is a tablet that I've connected to the Wi-Fi access point and I'm currently running a YouTube video just so I could see if it could recognize that and it does it actually recognizes that the traffic coming through this device is, is a YouTube video uh, streaming media and uh, this one down here the SRS desktop is this desktop that I'm recording on so this kind of just gives you a nice big summary of what devices are connected and what they are doing basically and it's pretty detailed um, one other thing I really liked is Cly 
this is it just pops open a terminal and allows you to gain access to the inside of the router the operating system running on the router itself so if I was to log in here and you could see it's it's just it's basically Linux uh, running in the router and you have direct access to it which is pretty damn cool I think um, see there's a the usual setup and you could see all the processes running which is pretty cool um, you can see the HCP is running uh, you could see all these other different services that are running including Python too that's pretty cool and um, you could even do sudo su and have access to all the super user uh, commands for example if stat you could see all the different ports and the type of traffic going through them and that's pretty cool and there's a lot of different things you could do here you could even ping for example uh, google.com there you go so if you want to test the router directly to see if you're able to uh, ping something um, there's a bunch of different commands I mean all the usual uh, Linux commands are in here I mean apart from that there's a lot of different things you could do here that uh, that's pretty cool I haven't looked through yet um, as I discover more things about this router I might make more videos in the future well uh, next video I'm gonna probably do it on the switch so I could get the printer the this desktop as well as the network uh, storage uh, all connected to that switch and to this router so that's gonna be the next part thanks for watching uh, subscribe and keep a lookout for the next part 3 video coming out soon mm -hmm.